it's this is this is more interesting because since it's sort of it's still the Dark Honor series in that kind of world, but it's high school based. You have you have this sort of thick middle of high school kids that are different voices to do, and then demons and you know eleven thousand year old warriors wander through in their in their outfits. So it, you have to sort of shift further than in just the regular Dark Hunter books, where almost everybody is kind of just from that world. So it, for me, I guess it it hopefully means I'm versatile enough to pull it off and, and, and tell the story right. But it's kind of fun. You've got more coming at you. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was, I mean, she's been in basically everyone I've read, and because the way she's described, and as anyone who reads these knows, her outfits are, I think, probably more interesting than my vocalization of her. I knew that before I get to her speaking. So I sort of, I had this blank canvas of like, you know, go for it. She's obviously pretty out there, so so why not? And uh, and I tried what I tried, and, and so far no one's complained, so, so they're letting me get away with it and continue to do that and go about as high as my range goes without hurting myself when doing her voice. Uh, it was it was astonishing. Uh, it was, I mean, it was like you know when a Star Wars movie opens and there's the midnight premiere. It was the dead of night in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and there were people around the block or all the way around the store, and um, it was great. And Sherilyn was phenomenal, and she started signing books at 12:30 and and sat there and was sweet and lovely and wonderful to everyone in that line and signed books until sometime after three in the morning. And I remember very distinctly the last four people in line when they got their book signed, had read it while they were standing there. And so I said, it was great, thank you, I'm gonna start it again when I get home. So it was, it kind of showed you, she's got her fan base and they, they care and she seems to care and give right back to them. There's a consistency to him, which is I think probably true of most characters that readers connect to, so that you always know it's Nick and you can kind of think, I bet I know he's gonna respond to this, but at the same time, you know, each book is another layer of either his regular sort of earthbound life or his preternatural life. So you, he gets more sort of info into who he is and where he is in the grand scheme. And so what in the first book I think was a more purely teen kid response now has this layering to it just because of the things he's experienced throughout. So you, you now, when you're reading it, can kind of go, I, I, I still think I know how he's going to react, but maybe he'll surprise me. Maybe he'll be one step ahead, you know. So he, he's gotten sort of thicker, and by that I don't mean putting on weight. As an actor, some people would be either really excited to do audiobook work or absolutely terrified because you, you have nothing. I mean, you don't even have your face anymore. You're just the voice in somebody's ear, either in their car or in their headphones or whatever. And so you're, it is up to you and any failure is yours and you can't hide, uh, which I guess means you can take credit when it goes well. When, it's, when you've performed it well, that's your fault too. But there's a lot of pressure in the way, in the way it's all on you. And that's different from a lot of other forms of acting. You're, you're in a theater piece or an ensemble piece. There's other people and you can kind of check out for a second, let somebody else do their job. And, and I don't get that opportunity which makes me love it, because I'd, I'd rather the pressure, I'd rather have to do all of the work and have it be down to me to, to pull it off. Obviously, the writer does the real work of giving the story, but then in the performance of it. But it's different in that it's, it's you're all alone. I mean, literally, you're all alone in a, in a little room that, you know, it's usually dark, and you're just, you know, flicking an iPad or turning pages, depending on your level of technology. Uh, so you, there's no audience except the one you create in your head and the people on the other side of the microphones. Uh, so it, you kind of have to fill in where a lot of acting jobs, it's there. It's either the crew or the set or the people in the seats or whatever. You, there's a little more imagination required on my end to make sure that the people I owe this performance to are sort of there and present for me when I'm in the booth. 